Welcome to another video, Purple Political Talk here. Today is Monday, June 21st, 2021, and today we're going to be discussing the 2024 presidential election and looking at a very interesting scenario, which at this point, I believe, is the battle of unpopulars who are very popular with their bases. This being Donald Trump for the Republicans and uh, Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, or AOC, for the Democrats. So let's see what this prediction brings. But before we do so, I wanted to remind you guys to like, subscribe, and turn on post notifications to be up to date with our latest content. And then also, while you're at it, please remember that tomorrow we have our New York City election night live stream um, with my good friend and biased election predictions who will come on the channel. So make sure you do not miss that because it's going to be a spectacle. So now that we got that out of the way, let's get started. So as I fill in the safe states for both parties, um, I'm going to discuss why I think, while this matchup might be somewhat unlikely based on the types of candidates who are polling is currently, it could actually happen. And if it does happen, what are we going to see the general feeling across the nation be? So AOC is certainly one of the most, um, you know, marquee political figures in the U.S. right now. She has taken the, the Bernie Sanders movement, the progressive movement in the United States, and she's literally cemented herself as the main leader of that movement in, in a way that is actually rather, um, rather, um, you know, shocking. She is the young head of this big movement, and within the Democratic Party, little by little, it's starting to get notoriety and it's starting to gain a lot of um, control of the whole party, the, the Democratic Socialist movement. Come 2024, AOC can run for president. She's currently too young, but by the time that we get to 2024, she's going to meet the age requirements to run for president. Now, at, at a nationwide level, she is unpopular um, with certain voters, you know, especially with independents and Republicans. So she's going to have a large opposition against her. However, um, with AOC on the ticket, that also brings a lot of excitement to bring out certain groups of voters now with this matchup we also have the the very unpopular donald trump i mean donald trump again he's popular amongst his base but nationwide donald trump is really not that liked in 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 the big scheme of things you know he really damaged his legacy and he really damaged his name when his supporters went out and you know um insurrected the u.s capitol so I think that that is something that we definitely should notice. And while that will have an impact on the election, um, you know, moving forward, once you have someone like AOC on the ticket for the Democrats, you know, I think slightly helps out Donald Trump. So these are the safe states that I have um, filled in right now. And these are the states that I believe will go by more than 15%. Um, we're going to see a lot more contested states because I frankly believe that you know, AOC will definitely hinder the Democrats' chances of moving forward in some of these states and, you know, building those majorities. And I think while AOC definitely has the possibility of running for national office like president or vice president in the future, I think that if she does so right now in the current political climate, she will lose and she will lose big. So let, let's get started by discussing the the toss-up states so these are states that you know would go by a little bit less i'm going to start with the likely states you know less than 15 percent more than five percent so let's start off with the democrats i think the only couple likely states you would have would be the state of new mexico and probably the state of colorado you know aoc is you know a very it's a she's a very big political figure and at this point in time i would say th these two states and maybe virginia as well five percent or more um AOC could build, you know, her inroads with the um, liberal voters. For example, in Colorado, you have a lot of them. New Mexico has a little bit more. It's going to be a little bit more contested if AOC is on the ticket. Um, however, I think that she'll still be able to win that, you know, narrowly in likely margin. And Virginia is, I mean, I think the Virginia is currently, what, how I think of Virginia is the, you know, the head of the Democratic Party. The Democratic Party in Virginia has very strong, and even with AOC on the ticket, I think she defeats Trump by at least five points. I think with this election, I think it's Donald Trump's possibility to come back and prove himself that maybe, you know, what all the things that he did during his presidency were different. So I really think that if AOC is on the, on the ticket in 2024, it's going to be a ticket to whoever the Republican is. And, you know, at this point in time, 
it's looking like it could be Donald Trump, although, like, you know, it's th th that craze of Donald Trump running for president is dying down. Ron DeSantis currently is the, you know, the more popular Republican to run for president. So, um, but that's not important right now. What is important is the likely states for the Republicans. You know, the Republican Party with AOC on the ticket are going to be able to win a couple states by likely marches. So, I think that they're going to get these states. So, I think they're going to get Alaska, Texas, Iowa, Ohio, and Florida. So, in Alaska, I think it could actually get a little bit closer because, you know, Bernie Sanders was pretty popular up there. So, AOC probably would be pretty popular too up there. Um, I think at the end of the day, you know, Republican seat is Republican seat and they're going to end up voting for Trump. Um, up north in the Midwest, in Iowa and Ohio, these are states that I think the, the Republican Party has done a very good job at, you know, consolidating their support there with a farmers and rural voters. But, you know, I think that AOC maybe could make some similar, um, you know, inroads with certain farmers. But I think at the end of the day, Donald Trump has a really strong, you know, hold in those states. Texas and Florida, I think it's, it's, um, it's more about the democratic socialist message. That is something that's going to hinder um, AOC in a lot of states, especially in Texas and Florida, where you have a lot of Hispanic population who came from a region that was plagued in a way by democratic socialists who, um, you know, had a little bit of trouble, you know, in those countries. So, um, you know, Bernie Sanders never did good in Florida. He did OK in Texas. But um, at the end of the day, with the whole with the whole independence and with all the Democrats and the Republicans, democratic socialism is like a dirty word in these states. So I think Donald Trump would actually go out and carry those states. So now that we got the likely states out of the way, let's talk about the lean states, or states that I don't think I the th I think will go by less than five percent. So I really think at this point, um, for for Alexandria Ocasio Cortez, she's looking at somewhere like Minnesota. Um, I think that's a, a, a it's good. It's the most liberal out of the Rust Belt, um, surprisingly, and I think that um, AOC definitely would certainly you know carry that state. But I think it would be a little bit closer than it was in. Um, in 2020 but you know i think that's where it stops for aoc i think that's where the lean states stop for her you know her messages in democratic socialism at a national stage they're gonna hurt her and if if the democrats do run a democratic socialist for the white house the chances are they're going to they're going to lose because it's going to be so easy to market them as you know big socialist whatever and remember at a nationwide point of view the word socialist is such a dirty word that Republicans could really use that to an advantage. So, um, you know, I think it might be at certain points exaggerated, but no matter no, no matter that, the 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 real the real fact is that at the end of the day, it's not really about what the you know what what the reality is, but how it's perceived. Politics is about perception, and unfortunately for AOC and a lot of Democratic socialists. Um, it is currently perceived as something very, very bad for the country. So I think that's something that's really going to hinder her. So that's what we have for the lean seats for the Democrats. For the Republicans, I think that Donald Trump is going to be able to make inroads in certain parts of the country. I think with AOC on the ticket, he can win Georgia back by around two points. North Carolina expand his lead by a couple points. And I would say that he would flip Arizona by probably one and a half, two percent, you know, even more. I mean, AOC probably wouldn't do very good in Arizona. You know, Arizona is a state where if Democrats are one to continue winning, they're going to have to run Biden like candidates. They're going to have to run maybe Pete Buttigieg's. They're going to have to run um, Sherrod Brown's. Those type of Democrats, blue dog Democrats, Kirsten Sinema, that's where she did so well there. Mark Kelly. These are more conservative Democrats. So. For the Democrats to continue to win in the state of Arizona, they're going to need to get those types of candidates. And I think that one thing's become clear. AOC doesn't really have that much appeal other than, you know, her liberal appeal to super liberal voters. So I think that's why in the Sun Belt, you're going to see Donald Trump take all of those Sun Belt states by storm. Um, but that that is where these lean states is. And I think at the end of the day, this race could be more um, of the tilt margin, although... Actually, now that I'm thinking of it, I would also give the state of Pennsylvania to a lean margin by um, to Donald Trump. I think he would win by 2% if AOC is a candidate. You know, I think everywhere else, though, in the Rust Belt, um, it, I think this is going to be interesting to see. You know, some worker rights things, those certain things that the Democrats, and especially the 
Bernie Sanders wing of the party have been pushing. Those things might do very, very well, you know, with with that message. But I think at the end of the day, the the America First message, you know, the big bring back the, the factories and bring back the work in that region of the country is a really big message. And I think AOC's um, message probably wouldn't be as good. And I think nationwide, we have to analyze another thing. AOC is unexperienced it's gonna it, she's gonna come off as unexperienced to be president you know she's been a, a, a congresswoman for um but at that point it would be what um six years um how, how how does that qualify her you know and i think a lot of voters are really going to start asking themselves that question so let's discuss the tilt states the states that i think are going to be the, you know the narrowest so um let's start by going up um over to these two districts i think trump was in these two districts although um they're probably going to be gerrymandered so um i think in the main second district it's probably going to be gerrymandered towards the democrats uh i think at the end of the day what's going to end up happening here is that you know it's going to be a close race however um donald trump is narrowly going to carry it now in Nebraska, I think it'd actually go by a little bit more. It's probably going to be more gerrymandered. So I, I usually keep that, those for the end of the video because of that gerrymandering fact. Now the last four states that we have: Nevada, Wisconsin, Michigan, and New Hampshire. So as far as Nevada goes, I think that even considering um, a lot of things and how the Democratic Party in Nevada is Democratic Socialist Central, the Democratic Socialist of Nevada took over the Democratic Party. Um, I really think that AOC could end up probably edging it out here narrowly, very, very narrowly, which is surprising because Nevada was trending very, very blue for the longest of time. I think that her support and, you know, her appeal to certain groups of Latino voters really will uh, help her. You know, that is in one of the couple of states where, you know, her Latino appeal is going to help her. You know, if you look at states like Texas and Florida, Arizona too. Those places her Latino support won't help her out. But somewhere like Nevada, I think certainly they it, it will help her out to win those states, especially you know, near Las Vegas. Now, looking at the other states that we have less, I think that in the state of New Hampshire, Donald Trump ends up winning here narrowly. I think that although like, there is some affection for people like Bernie Sanders in the state of New Hampshire, it's really not that big. And I think Donald Trump could certainly win here. I think it would be narrow, but you know, I think AOC... Um, could probably write, write, uh, ride Bernie Sanders' coattails in this state. However, I really think that at the end of the day, um, Donald Trump is probably going to end up winning those states. And going on to the last two states, I think the state of uh, Wisconsin narrowly goes to Trump and the state of Michigan narrowly goes to Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. You know, I think the big thing that tilts Michigan in AOC's favor is the African-American vote. The minority appeal in certain parts of the state that are really going to counter that victory. Now, one thing that we have to consider is how good might um, AOC's appeal to, um, you know, Rust Belt hardworking voters, how, were her, how would her appeal be? And, you know, that's a big question mark at this point. However, I think that she's going to have a certain appeal and I think she's going to have a similar to Bernie Sanders appeal to those voters. But... You know, I think this race could go off a little bit worse for EOC. I think that certainly all the tilt states could end up going to Trump. Well, not all the tilt states could end up going to AOC. But at this point, that is my prediction between Donald Trump and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Um, 296 to 242, Donald Trump is the winner. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If so, please give it a huge thumbs up, like, subscribe, turn on post notifications to be up to date with our latest content. Thank you for watching the video and goodbye.